Uh, today we bring to you a global exclusive report. What NewsX has accessed is 37 years after the Kanishka bombing, the Justice B.N. Kirpal report. We have managed to get all the 220 pages of the Justin B.N. Kirpal report, a report which was commissioned by the Indian government into the bombing of Air India Flight 182. This bombing let, resulted in the deaths of over 300 innocent lives. At the hands of this bombing were found Khalistani terrorists. All of this, of course, happened to be then information in hindsight. But mere months after the bomb blast on the aircraft and then at the Narita airport in Japan as well, somehow India was man has managed to put the puzzle pieces together. In June of 1985, the bombing takes place. In March of 1986, just a few months later, Justice B. N. Kirpal, along with his associates, submits the findings of their report to the government as well as to Canada. Canadian intelligence and the Canadian government took over three decades to release their findings. They only released them in 2010. Until then, only a single mastermind was convicted and he too was let go in 2017 and allowed to reintegrate into society. We will now put out some crucial aspects of what was found in the Justice B. N. Kirpal report. I have with me on the broadcast Wing Commander Praful Bakshi and Lieutenant General Kamaljeet Singh. We will just put together for our viewers the following chronology of events an explainer into how the bombs actually made it on board and then we will try to stitch it together for our viewers in India and globally so that they may understand what actually happened. The Justice B.N. Kirpal report has put out this timeline of events. On Thursday, June 20th, 1985, there were two flights, one connection to Air India 301 and connecting to Air India 182, C CPA 003 Vancouver to Tokyo and CPA 060 Vancouver to Toronto. So these were the two flights that were on target. A man called CP Air Reservations in Vancouver and after discussing a number of routes, booked a one-way ticket and CPA 060 to Toronto with connection to Air India 182 under the name of Jaswan Singh. So a man makes a phone call and gets a one-way ticket connecting from Toronto uh, with a connection to Air India Flight 182. This is all being done from Vancouver, by the way, under the name of Jaswan Singh. He also books a return ticket on CPA 003, which is the other flight, to Tokyo connecting with Air India 301 to Bangkok in the name of Mohinder Bal Singh. So two tickets are booked on the same day by the same person from Vancouver, one in the name of Jaswan Singh and the other one in the name of a Mohinder Bal Singh. A male attended the CPA air ticket officer office in Vancouver. He pays a sum of $3,005 back in 1985, imagine $3,005. Think about it in today's context and then think back in the day how much money this actually was. He, this money is paid to the Vancouver office of CPA for the above tickets after uh, changing the ticket of Mohinder Bal Singh to L Singh. So there's a person in Vancouver, he makes a call. He books two flights, one from Vancouver to Toronto, then further connecting to Air India 182, and the other one from Vancouver to Toronto, then further connecting to Tokyo and Bangkok. Both Air India flights are the interconnecting flights. One is in the name of Mahinder Bal Singh and one in the name of Jaswan Singh. The same man then visits the office the same evening. He pays in cash over 3,000 Canadian dollars and gets the names on the tickets changed to L Singh and Jaswan Singh's ticket is changed to M Singh. 
on Saturday, the 22nd of June, which is the day before the blast, at 1.30 p.m., a Mr. Singh called, uh, called reservations and got confirmation on his one-way ticket to Toronto with luggage to be sent through to India. At 3.50 p.m., at uh, yes, 3.50 p.m., Mr. Singh checks in with seat 10B confirmed to Toronto. He wants his suitcase interlined to A1182. The agents relent. So this man, Mr. Singh, gets on board. He comes in, he checks in with seat 10B, which is confirmed from Vancouver to Toronto. And he further wants his suitcase to be interlined to Air India 182, which is the flight on which the bomb exploded. The agents relent and by 4.18, CPA 060 departs from Vancouver 18 minutes late. Mr. Singh is not in his assigned seat. So this man manages to put in his luggage, interlink it, but he is not in the seat from Vancouver to Toronto when the flight takes off. Then the other man, L Singh, checks in for CPA 003 and one suitcase interlined to Air India 301. He is assigned the seat 38H. Meanwhile, at 8.22, CPA 060, which is from Vancouver to Toronto, arrives 12 minutes late. Some passengers and baggage are interlined to AI 181. A few minutes after that, at 8.37, CPA 003 departs 17 minutes late for Tokyo. L Singh, at this point, is also not in his assigned seat. So both men check in in the same airline from Vancouver to different destinations. They managed to put their bags onto the airline for them to be interlinked to other routes further. But neither is actually in their assigned seats when the flights take off from Vancouver to Toronto respectively. Air India 181 departs Toronto for Mirabel one hour and 40 minutes late. At around 1 o'clock in the night on 23rd June, Air India arrives in Mirabel. At 2.18, Air India 182 departs Mirabel 1 hour 30 minutes, 38 minutes late. At 5.41 a.m., uh, the flight from Toronto to Tokyo has also arrived at Narita Airport. It arrives 14 minutes early. At 6.19, when the baggage arrives from Toronto to Tokyo and it's being then put into the further connecting flight to Bangkok at 6.19 a.m. is when an explosion takes place. So this bag, which was also meant for an Air India aircraft 301, which was meant to go from Tokyo to Bangkok, in transit, when it's being shifted, the luggage is being shifted from one aircraft to the other at the Tokyo airport, is when the baggage cart explodes in the transit area. It kills two people and it injures four. Merely less than an hour after this incident has happened in Tokyo at 7.14 a.m. is when a loud sound is heard on Air India Flight 182 and it disappears from the radar of the ATC. At 8.05 a.m., Air India 301 departs from Narita and all the passengers are safe because the bag with the bomb is not on board. At 8.15, which was... Uh, Merely 10 minutes after that, the Air India 182 was scheduled to actually land at Heathrow. But an hour before that, there has been an explosion on the flight. The report here says that it's too much of a coincidence that two people whose tickets were brought at the same time, who checked in under the same, under similar names of L Singh and M Singh, both missed their respective flights. More so when M Singh had insisted at the check-in counter at Vancouver that he should be interlined even though his seat from Toronto to the next stop, which was supposed to be London, was not confirmed. And his baggage of one suitcase was accepted and it must be routed through to Delhi. If there had been some reason for gate no-show by both of them, one would ordinarily have expected both or at least one of them to have made some efforts at the time or thereafter to ask for a refund of the money or they should have contacted the airline staff at the airport and asked that they should be put on another flight. They didn't do any of this. They merely checked in, they put in their bags, and neither of them sat on the plane. I have with me Wing Commander Praful Bakshi and Lieutenant General Kamaljeet Singh. Wing Commander Bakshi, when we put out the sequence of events, sir, 
one has to also take this in context of the intelligence that was shared by Air India e on the 1st of June 1985. And this is not a story that I am cooking up. This is written in the Canadian government's report that they released in 2010. On 1st June, a telex was shared by Air India's Vigilance Committee to its global uh, offices. And this report also reached Canadian police. The Canadian police decided not to share this intelligence with other stations and also to not share it with their own intelligence agencies. On 4th of June, sir, Canadian intelligence tails Talvinder Parmar and Riyad Singh into a wooded area where they conduct a trial blast which is written off as a gunshot. And merely 20 days later, there is a bomb blast under very suspicious circumstances. What do you think Wing Commander Bakshi was happening? Uh, Devika, as uh, we have already spoken earlier on this subject, it is absolutely clear that first thing is this problem of Khalistan movement had was already established. It was nothing very new which had come up. So there is nothing surprising about it. Canada was very much into the game. They were, they were, they were on frequency. They witnessed the, the, the trial, they witnessed the experiments, they followed the luggage, they actually felicitated the entire system of, uh, you know, sabotage which was going on. So, uh, but uh, what I'm trying to draw attention to, that this support of Khalistanis was not a very uh, little uh, supported by um, some limited area, it was o o overall because this organization, a Khalistani movement, had gained a lot of strength. And by the way, it is not a new thing. This thought process goes into 1910 and it starts from there. So let us be very clear about it, that nothing new was implanted in the human mind, whatever the case may be. What I'm trying to draw to, to your attention is that Canada was very much into the say and the scheme of things. They are right there now. They were right there then. So we're, nobody can feign ignorance. Sorry, I don't know anything. I don't use, want to use a Punjabi term for this. But question is, this is what, the, what happened actually. So if uh, Canada has done it, now I kudos to your channel that you have brought out it so beautifully and clearly. I did not expect, uh, just as B.N. Kripal's report, uh, of course, uh, had come out, there is no doubt about it. Just as BN Kripal had spoken about it also. But uh, what I would like to uh, draw your attention to is that our reaction to the whole thing all these years was very lukewarm. Why was it so? And let me tell you one thing. We will talk about this incident. Yes, the smartness of this incident is a beauty. It's a lesson to be learned by everybody. But question is, a lot of homework has to be done by Indian government. The whole thing was, the headquarters is in India. It is not only in other countries. So we have to make sure that we now start studying both. Yes, these incidences, intelligence lapses is a stuff. Another way we have to do that. Our intelligence probably will have to study this and give their report also. But we have to also find out what homework are we doing to eliminate the, this aspect of um, Khalistan movement. How is it connected to Kashmir? How is it connected to drugs? How is it co connected? It is, it is finding its connection all over. You'll never know. You'll have something in Manipur now coming up. So I personally feel that this is a serious matter and government has to, uh, kudos to them. We have gained a lot of ground now. I think we have to bring it to a logical end. Canada has or no Canada, this um, Canada will be hearing this. They, must, must, they will be knowing what we are saying. So there is no doubt about it. Everything is very clear. But lastly, I tell you, uh, Devika, in this game, nobody is your friend. In America is paying lip service. Great Britain will play lip service. They are very keen supporter of Khalistanis. Australia, they are very keen supporters. So they are there. So they are only scared of your emerging image of strong country or like India just coming up. G20, Chandrayaan, everything. So. They are very careful in their utterances as far as the foreign statements are concerned. So, Devika, let's wait and watch. This is going to happen.
absolutely let me bring in lieutenant general kamaljeet singh as well so you of course uh, all right okay i think we seem to have lost that connection with uh, lieutenant general kamaljeet singh we will try to bring him back onto the broadcast but wing commander bakshi let me continue the conversation with you then sir a lot of people have been asking okay i believe uh, lieutenant general kamaljeet singh He's is back, back. I'll, I'll i'll come to you in just a moment sir lieutenant general kamaljeet singh uh you've been with us through the course of the day sir and you've also heard us putting together this report um as much uh, and as well as we could in the short time that we've had and we will of course continue this exercise of the course of the next few days but why do you think it took canadian intelligence and the canadian government almost 25 years to put together well 35 years to put together what india managed to put together in just a few months i uh, see uh, there is there become misplaced sense of allowing dissent and being extra liberal and uh, erring on the side of the culprit unless the offense is proved these are very lofty kind of you know principles ideals but they're not practical you're not applying it when you are eliminating aish ayman zaveri Zaberi was killed in Kabul, and uh, Pre uh, Premier Justin Trudeau himself said, "The world will be now a safer place." So you you have classified terrorism as good terrorism, bad terrorism, your terrorism, my terrorism. Here there were two Canadian uh, agencies, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, which had large amount of the responsibility for. prosecuting these people and canadian security intelligence service which had pushed up initial thing when they were telling these people who had carried out some kind of a rehearsal so uh, indarjit singh riyat and uh, uh, the other guy they were doing some rehearsal and they uh, they they did not follow it up they just thought it's it's a gunshot uh, noise so these two agencies kept on pickering didn't want to be seen as uh, culpable in the entire thing and there was lack of evidence but like justice kripal has said that in such an incident where 329 people perished from multiple nationalities where original plot was to have two very uh, diabolic kind of uh, you know blast on two sides one closer to london and other closer to tokyo towards the east and west it was charted out like this it is just providence that that baggage when it was being transferred in the luggage trolley it exploded and two japanese also died so people from multiple nationalities perished in this and justice kripal rightly said that if you could only find one indarjit singh riyat and charge him for manslaughter and later he is also been released allowed to get into mainstream and you could not charge others the main people who who planned all these things like uh, parmar who was talwinder singh parmar who later died in punjab uh, during the militancy or uh, terrorism which was there and you could not and he specifically named ripu daman singh malik and ajab singh pakdi his uh his uh, indication was these were the people who set up that el singh m singh and all that business which was you know just one singh and the, the other fake names being used trying to cover the tracks all this business was set up by these two guys and we did not canadians did not pursue it uh, to the logical end and they had to come to a conclusion there has to be a closure you can't have this way that nobody did it how can that be allowed to happen so it's sad very unfortunate canada has in the process allowed terrorism to flourish there there is uh, now a book which has come out cold strike which telling you that uh, uh, terrorism from canada has got proliferated to various countries to sri lanka to various other countries it has gone 
and that is because they have been allowed freedom they have been allowed that liberty and in the name of tolerating dissent it has become a free for all so that is the danger is time that this crisis is seen as an opportunity by canadians themselves they should clean up their house they should have zero tolerance to such a thing you you can't do this that you have a rally in brampton and you have w's depicting killing of uh, premier mrs gandhi uh, a woman you know being shown like that so these kind of uh, you can't put hoarding saying that we will kill the you know indian high commissioner in canada you can't have these kind of things you can't allow these things to flourish there i think uh, the royal canadian mounted police uh, in early 60s and 70s was a good force it had it had good reputation it needs to reclaim its glory to become strict and now they are part of this so called five by uh, dispensation which is also meant to eliminate terrorism so they have to join hands and there has to be zero tolerance on that you can't allow terrorism to be classified and to be nurtured in your backyard and if you're going to do it you will see the gang wars that are happening over there absolutely you first said yeah so devika i am i compliment your channel you have done a very bold thing you put the entire thing out in open public domain and you have uh, carried this debate through the day so great job done and i hope it finds some traction absolutely sir and of course uh, this is not uh, an exercise that we're doing in order to uh, you know gain any sort of attention but this is a matter that we truly believe requires our understanding as indians of what happened in the past and why is it that we now need to make it very clear to the world that we will not allow khalistani terrorists to continue operating in case something like a 1985 is to repeat itself the blood will once again be on the hands of those who protected the likes of talwinder singh parwar in 1985 i've run out of time for this uh, broadcast but 6 pm onwards we're going to be doing a marathon where we're going to be taking several sections of the justice b n kirpal report and going over them in great detail we will also be joined by some of the families of the victims who lost their lives we request you to stay on with newsx on that note i also thank all of our panelists for sitting with us through the course of the day having the patience to listen to us as we break down this report it's much appreciated for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon